Don't pick your skin, pick bandage. Hey guys, my face story here and my painted up hands. Also, I'm in a different room. I know. The other room is being worked on, so this is not to do for right now. Anyways, today I'm here to talk to you guys about how diet can affect your skin. Obviously, there's all these myths and whatever nonsense that people are like, you know, but you you are what you eat. I don't know. I feel like sometimes like that can be true to a certain extent, like it, you know, if you have food allergies or something, but you could eat the cleanest and still have acne. You could eat the worst and still have acne. Sometimes it's not like the common things people think like chips and soda and I don't know chocolate and pizza you know what I mean there it's actually like a specific diet a specific lifestyle and what that is is a low GI or commonly known as low inflammation diet these types of diets are super important and they can really really help your skin and here's why glycemic index is something Basically that measures the glycemic load of a food or how a food is going to impact your blood sugar level. If it has a higher glycemic index, like a 70 or more, it's going to have more of a hit on your blood sugar level and it's going to cause a spike in your insulin. A spike in your insulin is going to cause also a spike in all of your hormones and a spike in inflammation. The reason that that is not a good thing, that that is so bad, is because when your hormones are going crazy and when your insulin's going crazy and your inflammation's going crazy and acne sufferers already have higher inflammation, it's just like too much for your body to handle and then so it comes out in the form of cystic acne. What are high glycemic food items? High glycemic food items are things that really don't have any nutritional value to them. It's going to be things like white bread, white pasta, sugar, Sugar, sugary drinks basically think of like any refined carbs and those are gonna have high GI I wouldn't say like to avoid all carbs because I definitely think that you know we need carbs kind of <laughs> because some people you know are keto and they like don't eat carbs but I feel like we need you know like whole grains and good things like that so those actually whole grains have a lower glycemic load I'm about to get into that in a minute so high glycemic will spike everything and it will make it so that your body is so inflamed and it comes out in the form of cystic acne basically is what happens because <laughs> your body can't handle it and over time your body will store that excess insulin that it's producing because it the insulin levels keep spiking your body can't handle all that so the insulin it's storing too can also come out in that way which is just kind of crazy i mean if you think about it, it makes sense and i've noticed a huge difference since i don't really eat refined carbs anymore if you have any of these symptoms if you're like tired after eating them if you're achy after eating them like you feel like you need an immediate nap it's probably spiking your blood sugar level really high and then dropping it so look out for things like that because I know that I noticed a huge difference when I quit eating them. What is then a low GI diet? A low GI diet is going to be the opposite of that. So you're going to be avoiding all carbs and this is what helps acne. The low GI diet helps acne, also known as low inflammation diet. So you're going to be eating like no refined carbs, you know, no processed like bread, sugar, anything that's going to spike your insulin, anything that's going to spike your blood sugar level. And it also spikes the inflammatory hormone, IGF-1, which as you guys know, acne sufferers already have a higher level of IGF-1 in their system. So like here is an acne sufferer's IGF-1, here's a normal person's. So then after you eat the same food, the acne sufferer's inflammation level goes out the roof and the normal person's goes to like an acne sufferer's. So that's why, you know, sometimes we can't eat the same things because we already have these higher levels of inflammatory hormones in our body. A low inflammation, low GI diet would be eating things that have a lower GI scale. Um, a low GI scale is going to be the number 55 or less. A medium is 56 to 69 and high is going to be 70 or more, like I said earlier. Lower GI items, obviously, no refined carbs. All meat, though I wouldn't eat all meat. <laughs> Try to eat like, you know, as organic and as best as you can if you're going to eat meat. That obviously doesn't, isn't a carb. It doesn't have like an impact on your blood sugar. Um, there's low GI fruits and vegetables. Some fruits actually can trigger acne because they're high GI. For example, I know that a banana has a sugar content of 19 grams and I think your daily recommended amount is like 20 something. So yeah, I know that that's crazy because you know, 
fruit and vegetables are good for you, but there are higher GI ones, and I know like a potato is a higher GI one because it's super starchy. Most vegetables are going to be, you know, lower GI for, <laughs> they are going to be lower GI for the most part. So, you know, dark leafy greens, um, cauliflower, um, I'm pretty sure that dairy is, but I would not consider eating dairy just because it also causes inflammation. It has the IGF-1 hormone in it. It's actually in dairy and in you, but you know, it can spike you even further. And this isn't just like, you know, a myth or like nonsense. Like I have noticed like dramatic improvement, you know, in my skin, like I don't really get like the big, big cyst anymore since I stopped eating, you know, refined carbs and sugar and anything that's high GI, I really, really try to avoid. It can kind of sound confusing, but there are like a ton of charts online that can help you out. And there are, you know, pretty much like basic categories, like nuts, beans, things like that are gonna be low GI. Again, like I said, meat, um, good fats, like avocado and oils, like all those things are. It's really just like the things that you would think aren't good for you, but like taste good. Yeah, those are probably going to be low GI. This isn't just like hogwash or anything like that. You know, there's a bunch of studies that have been done. The study that was done in 2007 showed that when a control group of acne sufferers versus another group of acne sufferers, like of the placebo, so the placebo, you know, they were eating exactly the same, but the control group, they were put on a low GI diet. When the control group was put on a low GI diet, there was like, I think it was a 25% reduction in pimples, which is kind of crazy because it was only eight weeks. It wasn't even that long. So it just goes to show, you know, internal inflammation can show in form of external inflammation. I just think that it's crazy that there's not more talk on this, you know, especially like with the internet and stuff. <laughs> I just feel like there should be more information on it. There's also a, besides, you know, high glycemic, low glycemic, there's also a thing called the glycemic load. That one has a, a smaller sliding scale and the glycemic load actually takes into account like portion sizes. And when the portion sizes are taken into account with the food, usually with the glycemic load, if you're going by that, you can eat things that maybe you wouldn't have ate if you're going by the just like plain GI, like strict number from the one to a hundred scale. So glycemic index and glycemic load. So. Yeah, glycemic index, one to 100. Glycemic load has more of a, like a sliding scale because it does take into consideration that portion size. So maybe you have like a quarter of a donut on the glycemic load, but that would probably not affect your blood sugar as much. But if you're going with a glycemic index, it'd be like, no, no donuts. So it really just depends on like which one you wanna go with, which one you feel like offers the most like flexibility for you. I definitely try to just do glycemic index because I have to be strict with myself or else I just like fall right off the wagon. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah guys, that is it. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment on this video and hopefully you enjoyed watching it. Hopefully you learned something. Maybe, you know, you realize, hey, I'm eating a lot of refined carbs and I'm also breaking out. So maybe I'll cut back on carbs and see what happens. Or maybe you won't. <laughs> But uh, regardless of what you choose to do, at least now you know there is a direct correlation between low GI, low inflammation diet, and, you know, clearing your acne. So that's great. All knowledge is good knowledge, right? All right. That's all I got, guys. Okay. Bye.